Oh, hello there. Merry Christmas. Or is it? At Christmas, do you find yourself increasingly trapped in conversations you don't want to be in? John, let me tell you what I think about immigrants, yeah? Do you need something to combat the sheer exhaustion of non-stop eating? Could you use something to distract everyone from their true feelings for each other? Sandra, how long do you put these mince pies in for? Pastries like sawdust. I want a divorce. What you need are board games. For some of you, board games at Christmas might look a bit like this. Whose go is it? Yours. Yours. I'm bored. Rah. But it doesn't have to be this way. In this video, I'm talking about my top 10 games to play at Christmas. Games you can play with Grandma and Little Timmy. Great fun, easy to learn, and won't end in arguments. Hopefully. And number 10 is Word on the Street, a team game where you're fighting to win letters by making words. Your team has 30 seconds to come up with a word that fits the category. Something found at a wedding. Regret. Deceit. No, wait. Depression. The longer the word, the better. For each letter in the word, the matching tile moves towards your side of the street. If a letter appears twice, it moves twice. If you manage to move one off the board, you win that letter. We won the letter F. It's S, Timmy. S. F. Then the other team get a go. They may want to focus on picking a word that will pull certain letters back to their side of the board to stop their opponents from winning them. Something that causes an allergic reaction. Christmas. Opening his wallet. No, wait. Immigrants. Prick. What'd you just call me? Nothing, Barry. I was just saying a pinprick could cause an allergic reaction. <sighs> Word on the street is great for Christmas because it's a lively experience that's playable with any size group. And number nine is Las Vegas, a brilliantly simple and addictive dice game. Married my third wife in Vegas. I'm a fourth wife. Good holiday that was. There are six casinos offering different amounts of cash. On your turn, you roll all of your dice and decide which number to play. For example, if you rolled four threes, you could put all of them on the number three casino. I suppose I'm putting all my eggs in one basket, like I did with your father. Eggs? You haven't had any eggs since the 90s. Why else did we have to adopt this run? I'm adopted. The player with the most dice on a casino wins that money. Get in, my son. Now my luck's in, I need to get down a bookie, stick an accumulator on. Maybe then I can afford this bloody Christmas. But. If two or more players have the same number of dice on a casino, they cancel each other out and the money goes to the next highest. This game is aptly named because at any point every player has the feeling that they can still win. This is mine. I can do this. All I need are two ones. Damn it. And just like Las Vegas, it lures many a victim into coming back for more. Daddy, can we open our presents now? No, one more game. Barry, it's 6 a.m. It's still Christmas Eve if we ain't gone to bed yet. Oh. And number eight is Timeline, a trivia game of guessing dates. When I was a kid, trivia game meant trivial pursuit. And trivial pursuit meant misery. Who was the Prime Minister of Great Britain in 1966? Um, what's a Prime Minister? Wrong. Harold Wilson. God, bad at trivia. I guess we'll put that one down to your biological parents as well. Who would have thought that a game about collecting cheeses could be so tedious? Trivial Pursuit is an unforgiving game. If you don't know the answer, tough luck. Timeline levels the playing field by encouraging guessing. On your turn, you have to add one of your event cards to the timeline in the center, keeping it in chronological order. Well, Star Wars must have been released before I met your father, because I remember feeling happy when I saw it. You turn over the card to reveal the date. If you're right, the card stays. If you're wrong, it's removed and you have to pick up a new card. The first person to get rid of their cards wins. If asked, most people wouldn't know exactly when the barometer was invented, but you might have a rough idea in relation to other events. If you really don't know, you can play a card earlier when the gaps in the timeline are much bigger. I don't know when the barometer was invented, but I'm fairly certain it was after the taming of fire and before 50 Cent released his seminal classic Candy Shop. Timeline still captures the best thing about trivia games, that great feeling you get when you get it right. Whether you're a trivia genius and you can pinpoint it exactly, or you went with a hunch and it paid off. Daddy likes the Godfather, and Daddy's old, so the Godfather must be old. And number seven is Sushi Go, a card game about eating sushi. Now let me explain this game with a festive analogy. You've got the box of chocolates, and you love chocolates. I love chocolates. There's eight chocolates left, 
And you know that you're only allowed to take one and then you have to pass it along to your family so that they can take one. There's caramel, cream egg, whisper. Only one, Timmy. There's a good boy. Oh, I can't decide. As ever, there's more than one that you want. But you can see that there's more chocolates left than there are family members, which means the box will come back to you for a second pick. But what will be left then? Maybe you pick caramel because you know your mum loves caramel. And if you don't take it now, she definitely will. You'd better not take that caramel, Timmy. I need that. Milk chocolate is my favourite, Perthy. Your favourite is milk chocolate. There's two of those left, so you could wait, bank on it coming back round to you. But how heartbroken would you be if you missed out? Oh no, there's only fudge left. Once all the chocolates are gone, Christmas is over, and you work out how happy your selection of chocolates made you compared to everyone else. Sushi Go has been a hit with everyone I've taught it to. It has a brilliant pace to it because everyone's picking their cards at the same time, so it's a perfect game to keep everyone engaged. And the artwork is adorable. And number six is Camel Up, a game of betting on camel racing. Finally, a game I'm good at. I can win back all the money I wasted buying Timmy that stupid penguin. But I thought Father Christmas gave me Perthy. Barry! Yes, sweetheart, it was from Santa. Great. Well, if he's taking all the credit, Santa can pay for the speech therapist as well. In Camel Up, players make money by betting on the camel that comes first or second in a stage of the race. Each camel moves based on their matching die. Come on, blue, you humpy sack of potatoes. Where the game gets interesting is that if a camel ends its turn on the same space as another one, it sits on that camel's back. Mummy, why is the white camel on top of the blue camel? Because they love each other very much. The camel on top is considered further ahead. On a future turn, if blue was to move first, blue would carry white with it. This game is full of exciting moments where the camels all stack on top of each other and you can't predict which one will move first. It captures gambling perfectly because you don't know which one will win and you just have to take a risk. Camel Up plays up to eight players, which makes it great for big family get togethers. And number five is Cockroach Poker, a game of looking your loved ones in the eye and lying to them. What could be more perfect for this time of year? Oh, wow. I love it. How did you know I wanted a tiny jug? In Cockroach Poker, you have a hand of cards with creatures on them. On your turn, you give a card face down to another player, announcing what creature it is. This is a cockroach. No word of a lie. It's up to you whether you tell the truth or not. And that's what the other player has to work out. They can either agree or disagree with your statement. If they're right, your bluff has failed and the card goes in front of you. Yes, you are a cockroach. Sorry, it is a cockroach. I was right. If they're wrong, you've succeeded in fooling them and the card goes in front of them. No, it's not a cockroach. Ha! Yes, it is. I love how simple this game is. It strips out all the unnecessary bits of other bluffing games and leaves the best bit. Can you lie to your family? Can you tell when your family are lying to you? I didn't eat the last mince pie. I brush my teeth every night. I respect you as a person. You're all liars, a lot of you. This game is especially good to play with family or close friends. I've had people thinking that they'd have an unfair advantage because they know another player too well, and then they come away from the game realizing they couldn't work them out at all. I feel like I can't even trust you anymore, Jonathan. Did you even like the tiny jug? The aim of the game is to get four creatures of the same kind in front of another player. And that's when the game ends. That player loses. Because in cockroach poker, there are no winners, only a loser. At number four is Ticket to Ride. Most of the games on this list take about half an hour to play, but occasionally at Christmas you might get the chance to play something a bit longer. Now in years gone by, that game would have been Monopoly, but Monopoly takes forever and usually ends in tears. Welcome to the Mayfair Hotel. Our rooms start from £2,000. We hope you enjoy your stay. I don't want to stay in your hotel. I can't afford it. Looks like you're out of the game, champ. You sit there in silence until we finish, okay? and someone always cheats. Dad, can I have 200 pounds from the bank, please? This ain't the bank's money, Tim. This is my money. The bank's run out of money and would like to ask all players for a bailout. In Ticket to Ride, players are competing to build train lines across a map. You each have secret objectives, ticket cards. This card means that if by the end of the game I have a route running from London to Athens, I get 16 points. Oh, great, John. Just build a train running from Eastern Europe to the UK, as if they need any more of an excuse to come over. Barry, why don't you just- Jonathan! Forget about that and have another lager. Will do. Yeah, a nice European lager. If you don't complete that route, you get minus 16 points. This game is super simple. 
On your turn, you can do one of two things. You can either pick up two train cards, or you can play train cards to put trains down on the map. All aboard the Pamplona to Barcelona Express. Choo choo! The challenge is knowing when to do what. It might be tempting to spend lots of rounds collecting all the cards you need, but if you do that, someone else might steal your route. Damn, I wanted that. Tough. While you were off interrailing around Europe, phoning your mum for handouts every five seconds, I was back at home building good, honest British rail. It's got that tasty bit of strategy that hooks you in. Your decisions feel important. It's competitive without feeling overtly mean. And rather than being made bankrupt like in Monopoly, there's still a feeling of accomplishment for second place. Ticket to Ride is a modern classic in the board game world. In fact, I played Ticket to Ride for the first time four years ago on Christmas Day. I lost twice, but it was brilliant. And that was my first ever modern board game. And now I have over a hundred. At number three is Wink a game that involves winking at your sister and catching your parents in the act. I'm watching you. I know, Barry. That's the game. Wink is a brilliant party game. In the center, a grid of numbered cards, and in your hand, you have cards matching some of the ones in the center. On your turn, you pick a card that you want from someone else. I want number three. The player who has that card has to try and wink at them before their next turn. If they succeed, both of them get a point but if anyone catches them winking, that person can accuse them and take both points for themselves. Barry, you've got number three. What are you, a grass? Wink is intense in a good way. Everyone's looking at each other the entire game. If you stop to check your phone, you'll lose. The trick is not in the winking, but in waiting for when no one else is looking at you and in trying to get the attention of the person you want to wink at. Thanks, mummy. <sighs> You get a buzz playing it. Every time you get away with a successful wink or receive a wink unscathed, it's a mini victory. It plays from four to eight players and it's so simple I just explained the entire game. If your family are humans and they can sit in a circle, you can play this game. And you should. At number two is Concept. Now this wouldn't be a Christmas games list without at least one guessing game. You know the drill. One person is trying to communicate something to everyone else. Pictionary, Time's Up, Charades. A monkey. Stupid. A small child. Adopted. Concept is a new twist on the genre. In this game, you have to communicate using the board of concepts, which contains loads of descriptive icons representing things like man, woman, building, vehicles. At first, it might seem impossible, but if you get creative, you can use the board to describe almost anything, from Taylor Swift to Quidditch, to phrases such as every cloud has a silver lining. Um, all the weather is grey. Lots of Wayne is metally. Don't be stupid, it must be a common phrase. Clouds can be happy. I think concept is great for Christmas because it's a more relaxed guessing game. Instead of just rabid shouting, you've got to take some time to think through the clues. It's a man. He's old and angry. Hitler! Close. You've connected Christmas with sadness. Scrooge? The Grinch? No. And he wears blue clothing on his torso. Daddy! It's Daddy! Yes. Well done, Tiny Tim. Oh. That's what you think of me, is it? An angry man who hates Christmas. Concept has been a huge hit with everyone I've played it with. There have been evenings where my friends would have played it all night if I'd let them. In the 90s, every family's game shelf had a copy of Scategories, Taboo or Pictionary. This is the game that should be there now. You've got to mend your ways, Barry. You've ruined Christmas. If only you had one more chance to show him you could be a good man. Does anyone want to play another game? Yes. At number one is Telestrations, a party drawing game. Pictionary is so last millennium. No longer do families have to shout at each other for being awful at drawing. How is that a squirrel, Tiny Tim? or being awful at guessing. It's the Mona Lisa. That could be any 16th century portrait. Telestrations is Pictionary meets Chinese Whispers. You each have a whiteboard flipbook and a word to draw. Everyone simultaneously draws their word, then passes the flipbook to the person on their left. You have to guess what the picture you've been handed is supposed to be, write your answer on the next page, and then pass the book on. Now you've got a new word to draw. You keep guessing and drawing until your original drawing comes back round the circle to you. And then you get the best bit of the game, the reveal. You each show to the group the story of your whiteboard. Word was candy floss. I drew this. <laughs> then mum guesses holding a tree. Have you ever seen candy floss? Tiny Tim drew this. 
That's pretty good, Tiny Tim. So of course, John guesses, monster. He's massive, he's as big as a tree. I thought it was Godzilla. There's nothing worse than being told you will find something funny, so I won't say that. But this game had us in hysterics. Are you bad at guessing? Great. Are you bad at drawing? Even better. This game is all the more entertaining when players are making mistakes. You really want at least six players with this game, ideally eight. The more players you have, the better the journey will be from the first word until the final guess. The word was Yorkshire puddings, and the final guess was poison cheerleader. <laughs> there isn't a Christmas film in existence that can make old-fashioned grandma laugh at the same time as a too cool teenager, but Telestrations can do that, and that's what makes it the perfect Christmas game, and what makes games the perfect thing for Christmas. Now, John, I wanted to talk to you about these immigrants. Uh, yeah. Why don't we invite some round for Christmas dinner? Wow, okay. Barry, are you all right? I'm more than all right, it's Christmas. Sandra, remember that prize turkey we saw in the window of Marks and Sparks? Go and buy it, and all the trimmings. Oh, Barry. I love you, Sandra. I don't want to divorce you. I love playing Telestrations at Christmas. Tiny Tim, your speech impediment, it's gone. It's a Merry Christmas after all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Percy. Merry Christmas, Barry. I love you. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel to see more of the same. I've put links to all the games in the description of this video. What do you like to play at Christmas? Let me know in the comments. I'm Actual Lowell on Facebook and Twitter. I've been John Perkis. Thanks for watching and Merry Christmas.